So today we're going to go through a number of chest radiographs uh, that I've collected with the help of a wonderful website called Radiopedia.org. This is an Australian based organisation that uh, promote and advance free and open access to radiology, slides, films, um, computerized renditions of uh, a, a wonderful array of uh, different radiographs. So if you haven't heard of them, check them out now. That's radiopedia.org. And you'll see through this video just what they're capable of. So I've um, taken a number of, of different radiographs from their uh, free and open access website um, to use in this free video to you. Um, I want to look at a couple of chest radiographs and we're going to go through them. I'm not a radiologist but I do look at chest radiographs and uh, different imaging modalities every single day in work um, and I wanted to go through a couple of the processes that you might see on some of the uh, x-rays uh, and CT scans you come across. Quite often this is a, an area of medicine that's not taught particularly well at medical school so um, it's useful to have a good look and a good process um, to go through whenever you're looking at these things. So we're going to attribute all of these to their their original authors, which is down on the right hand side, um, and the respective uh, Radiopedia ID that they have. Uh, check them out, thank them if you've got the time, and uh, we're going to start now. So this uh, radiograph that's coming up, the patient is a heavy smoker and presented with a cough. Uh, with ex expectoration and chest pain since six months so six months ago with acid fast bacilli positive in sputum microscopy they're 30 years old don't know where they're from the demographic but i think we can pretty much say that they probably have tuberculosis if they have acid fast bacilli plus 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 in sputum microscopy let's have a look and see what they're showing us so best thing to go through here so first impressions of this if we start um at the at the front looking at the heart this is a coronal lung window uh, and it shows pretty heavy damage um to the lungs um going through uh, in a in an orderly fashion you should look at the airway first so here we can see the trachea coming down and forming the right and left main bronchus and dividing up into the airways you can see that uh, the breathing if we look at the breathing the lung windows so there's no obvious signs of uh, if we scroll the way back and forward there's no obvious signs of any pneumothorax uh, in terms of the cardiac contour uh, looks to be within normal limits you can't really say very uh, much else about it with this um, in terms of the lung spaces then back to the lung spaces there's certainly a lot of disease processes here we're not going to go through the a b c d e as we did in our first x-ray video that you can see on the on the playlists um because this is a ct for one thing and we're looking at very specific pathological changes in order to exemplify um those um those processes within uh ct modality in this case so the first thing you can see is a big cavitation here. That's air. So black is air. So it's trapped air within here. You can see all this scarring and nastiness uh, within the airways. Another uh, large area of just air trapped air here. And going through the whole lungs, all of the lungs look pretty, um, pretty bad. It does seem seemingly worse in the in the upper airways, particularly this upper right. Uh, lobe of the airways. Now let's see what the um, the proper radiologist said. There are multiple thick-walled cavitatory lesions noted in bilateral upper lobes, along with patchy ground glass nodules. You can see all these ground glass appearance nodules across the lungs here, there, there, all the way down, mm -hmm. and branching. Centriolobular uh, nodules, tree and bud cystic bronchiectatic changes and subplural emphysematous bili so subplural under the emphysis bili so you can see here this is suggestive of infective etiology most likely pulmonary tuberculosis with chronic obstructive disease changes so if we now look at an axial lung window going through this uh, this is um a select modality to look at the lung window particularly you can see that massive um that massive cystic cavitatory leads that, that large um cavitation within the upper lobe uh, on the right hand side there going all the way down see multiple ones of these and look at all that scarring within the lung fields at that at that uh, at that junction go 
going further down then the bottom of the lungs look in slightly better shape than the top one so this one says that it is um suggestive in fact of etiology and because we have the the clinical history of um of tuberculosis that's quite interesting whenever you're looking at this particularly as a lay person a lay medical person not a radiologist looking at that yeah that's pretty obvious changes but it's sometimes useful to see bronchiectatic changes um and the branching central lobular nodules so uh, the tree and bud formation there and the cystic bronchiectatic changes in the subpleural emphysematous bili so below the pleural emphysematous bili we're talking about there the, the sub plural region emphysema is bili there there so it continues on here and says that in both the conditions pulmonary tb and copd there's destruction of pulmonary extracellular matrix the mycobacterium cell wall antigen uh, lam is responsible for matrix metalloproteinases or protease an immune mediated breakdown of extracellular matrix collagen Smoking also enhances protease and elastase activity in the extracellular matrix, thus resulting in destruction of collagen. So this is a collagen destructive process. In long-standing tubercular infection, COPD may be a complication, so it may not actually be to do with smoking. It could just be to do uh, with the fact that the person has a long-standing infective tubercular infection. And let's not forget this man is or um, almost thirty year, is 30 years old with these pretty rough-looking lungs. So in our next x-ray of a different patient, uh, we can see if we use our original way of looking at lung radiographs, chest radiographs, that there is a, there was definitely just a slender cardiac silhouette here for the first instance. And if we track our airway down, we can sort of see the, um, the right main bronchus um, coming off here. But the most... Um, the most striking thing here is that there is hyper expansion of the lungs. You can see all those, um, all those ribs all the way down. There's flattening of the diaphragm, and there's very coarse, um, a very coarse appearance, um, to the, um, to the bronchovascular markings, um, very coarse appearance by both of the lungs. If if you had said this patient, um, had presented with um, with shortness of breath and other things um, in keeping with COPD you wouldn't really particularly be surprised this is a very typical COPD chest there doesn't seem to be any um, focal areas of consolidation and if the patient was complaining of any infection you wouldn't um, you wouldn't worry too much but this is a they're all chronic changes down in the lungs the the, uh, the coarse vasculature the coarse um, bronchovascular markings that it says in the official report here um, this is a frontal x-ray um, of the chest you can see that slender cardiac silhouette the flattening of the diaphragms and looking the whole way through the coarse markings so in this chest radiograph we're going to look at a man who's complaining of sudden onset chest pain he's 80 years old and uh, it's a man so looking further at this um he said he'd had sudden onset chest pain so looking um, third is lung fields. Uh, it's hard to see, but just with the penetration of this, the the um, the airway, the uh, trachea, you can see that both lung fields. If we go for the right, uh, we can see the whole way around it, and then if we go the whole way around, well, are we seeing the full movement of um of lung right against the line? I think there is a there is a, a cause for concern of um of air here at the at the bottom left not agree uh, you can see the claustrophonic angles on both sides it is um hypo dense compared to here so there's less density that's in keeping with air there's less fluid here and probably warrants further investigation particularly he's, he's complained of he's complained of sudden onset chest pain you'd want to you worry why there is a, a big patch of air down here potentially um looking all here i think that's just external monitoring and um and oxygen piping and things like that and there's no indication that there's sort of any uh, rib fractures you would go through all this of course look at the uh, cardiac silhouette seems quite slim and he does seem quite hyper expanded in a way and there's flattening of the diaphragm certainly and um, maybe want a bit better penetration of the x-ray but um, that's fine it's hard to assess where his um his uh his spinous processes are but they look like it's not rotated but just moving on then, it says here there is large left pneumothorax with no midline shift to suggest tension. Lung are, lungs are hyperinflated in keeping with COPD. 
Okay, so moving on, is there a better image we could see to to um to clarify this? And indeed, there is a uh, a good um, CT scan here. So if we go to the top and we work our way down, so this is from the top, looking down at the apex of the lungs. You can see that there is a pneumothorax surrounding. Uh, there's air around the lung. You can see the lung tissue coming in now, and you can see there is air surrounding that lobe, going down. And at the bottom and that's the diaphragm and then to the abdomen so there is the pneumothorax going the whole way up you can see more pneumothorax and right up to the top right up to the top of the picture and right enough if we go back to this original x-ray where we said oh there's um there's a hypodense area here what about looking up at the top? Can we really see lung markings the whole way up here? And then whenever you look closer, you can see that line here. And that shows that there's really no lung markings past this line. So whenever you correlate that with the CT, you can see that there's actually a pneumothorax the whole way around this chest x-ray. So in this CT scan, the findings are a large left pneumothorax in the background of emphysematous changes and subpleural bili at the apices. There's a left lower lobe nodule. This case that was um, denoted to Radiopedia by a guy called Henry Knipe, um says that pneumothoraces can be spontaneous or traumatic or iatrogenic caused by the physician or traumatic. When spontaneous, they can be primary or secondary to underlying lung disease. This is an example of secondary spontaneous pneumothorax due to emphysema. So the emphysema just changes, is caused a weakness in the lining of the lung and caused a spontaneous pneumothorax secondary to that underlying lung disease. So this is a screening chest x-ray for a 45-year-old female. So going forward, we're going to look at this chest x-ray. I'm going to use our ABCD approach. We're going to look at the airways, the bronchus. Here looks in the midline. We're going to look at the, um, the breathing, the borders, of the lungs. It doesn't look like any pneumothorax there. We're going to look at the cardiac silhouette. That looks okay, all the way round. We're going to look at the rotation. We're going to look at the spinous processes. Look equidistant from the end of the clavicles. There doesn't seem to be any focal processes and there's no uh, evidence that any ribs are broken. The right hemidiaphragm is raised more than the left hemidiaphragm. And all in all, this looks like a fairly normal x-ray. And indeed, it's a normal chest x-ray. For our last x-ray, we're going to be looking at an x-ray that was just for a routine checkup. There was no other patient data provided, but um, surely it provides a learning point for us all. Okay, so um, there is... Uh, right, if we start off, first of all, and what we're going to see. So can we see a, a trachea for our way? So I can't see any trachea. can't see any... Uh, can't see any um, bronchi dividing. The heart looks like it's right in the middle of the chest. Looks a bit odd. But in saying that, the ribs look a bit rotated round almost, don't they? And that clavicle is not in the same position as that clavicle. Unless this man was mangled or something. Um, this does not look normal. And that's in keeping with rotation um, of the x-ray. The other thing that's quite apparent is there's uh, quite a lot of stuff in probably his, his front his front pocket is that a phone or these uh, coins or something like that there's a lot of artifact in this x-ray and therefore you can't tell anything uh, about what's going on under this lung and because they're so rotated uh, it's hard to actually make any comment over over uh, cardiac anatomy or anything else um, or even how many ribs are shown or anything else so this is a bad x-ray uh, this is this is not a good x-ray for interpreting um can't even really say about the lung fields there looks like there's lung markings here but because that's here it's making me think that there's potentially consolidation here but again that's that may not be correct uh this is quite rotated let's see what the guys say the following passages are noted from the very obvious to the least cell phone coins a pin is that a pin is that there or something like that very good uh, and a, a button a button 
someone's very hawk-eyed in this. The patient is grossly rotated. However, the visualised part of the chest appears normal. That's a very uh, diplomatic report for this. Uh, this case is, is courtesy of Dr. Aditya Shetty with the number uh, provided. So uh, go and have, have, have a look on Radiopedia for uh, more of her cases. This is a case of the foolish technician deficient in the preparation of patient prior to an x-ray being undertaken. Here are the basic guidelines for any x-ray of the chest or abdomen. Keep aside cell phones, coins, remove chains around the neck, pins, clips. Provide a gown to the female patient. Maintain a good centralisation of the patient and adequate exposure as per the part being examined. So take their uh, clothes off as, as, as you're able to. Uh, and stuff as well so we're going to be continuing in these sort of videos to look through different chest x-rays just to get you more prepared at looking at them and um, go through a systematic approach to them um, and maybe highlight more pathologies for you once again can't recommend radiopedia enough uh, radiopedia.org they have thousands upon thousands of x-rays and cts and mris on there for to have a look at they also have a supporter scheme where you can enjoy exclusive supporter perks uh, if you contribute to Radiopedia. Um, but if you've enjoyed these sort of videos, we'll certainly be doing more of them. Um, leave us a comment in the description and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again soon.